Today marks the 19th anniversary of September 11th, the tragic terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and Pentagon that killed nearly 3,000 Americans. The massive fire set by attackers crushing hijacked American Airline Flight 11 at the World Trade Center in New York only took 102 minutes to destroy the massive office buildings, making the attack one of the most harrowing episodes in history. The horror continued as America began realizing that the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. had been hit too. Us here at IBL invite you to take a moment to honor those affected by 9-11 today. And we have have a special guest before we get into the comments. Darcy, welcome to the show. Do you remember 9-11? How old were you when 9-11 hit? I remember 9-11 not entirely well. I was only one when 9-11 happened, but yeah. as I grew up, um, I remember hearing about it like when I was about seven. Um, we were talking about it in class, in my first grade class, and I was so confused as to what happened. Of course, when you're young, you don't understand the gravity of different situations. So as I got older, I realized how impactful it was. And it was also something I'll never forget in my, um, like, maybe like two years after that, um, when I was like nine, someone was talking in class about their experience about 9-11. Somebody in my class um, actually had someone who died during 9-11, so it was really hard for them. And it was an emotional time and the teacher had to console them. So it's just really crushing to know that happened. Cancel culture strikes again and is trying to take down Netflix. After the release of the film Cuties, which is a film about an 11 year old girl trying to find herself battling between traditional origins and a group called the Cuties, who are the cool girls making dance videos and taking selfies. A petition was filled out by over 600,000 people to cancel their Netflix subscription over Cuties. In a statement, Netflix responded by saying, Cuties is a social commentary against the sexualization of young children. It's an award winning film and a powerful story about the pressure young girls face on social media and from society more generally growing up and we'd encourage anyone who cares about these important issues to watch the movie. What do you think about that one, Darcy? Well, don't hate me, but I was one of the people who did fill out this petition because I personally feel like Cuties does sexualize young um, teenagers and even though I know that this won an award at the Sundance Festival. I just don't think it's right to be brought onto Netflix. And it's it, to me, it feels like we're normalizing um, the sexualization of young girls when we show films like that. I feel like there's a better way to critique um, the sexualization of young girls and the pressure to grow up when you're young. It's just different to see that because when I was young, personally, when I was around that age, 11, 12, 13, we had like girls like playing with Barbies on television, um, like running around the neighborhood, stuff like that. Like the, our teen dramas were not as intense as I think Cutie might be. I feel like light needs to be shined on this topic. So we'll see how I feel act after actually watching it. To me, it's, it's an interesting dichotomy essentially because you have this film that is displaying maybe sexualization of young girls, but then you also have uh, just being real here, like Cardi B and Megan the, Megan the Stallion drop in, wow. You know, it's like in pop culture, this, this film or this uh, music video, specifically this song was very political, like it was a, a controversial thing. And now the show is another controversial thing. And it's kind of, they're kind of like the, it's representing some of the same aspects of that music video. Do you, what do you think, Darcy? I think they're kind of two different things because of the demographics, who it's targeting. Because if you really think about it, who's really gonna watch cuties other than like young girls and people who are interested, interested in seeing what the film is about. I don't think people in their 20s are really going to watch cuties and 30s and so on and so forth. I feel like unlike WAP, that is for more 20s, 30s, an older audience that knows what they're talking about, the material of that song. So I feel like, although they're both like polarizing things, they, I feel like Cuties could possibly set like a bad example for young girls other than WAP because they wouldn't have really access to that because there's like age restrictions on YouTube now. So they can't really see that type of stuff unless their parents allow them to. Should a leader open up about their struggles with mental health? On Wednesday, Dallas Cowboy quarterback Dak Prescott did just that and talked about his battle with anxiety, depression, and sleeplessness. To be transparent about it, uh, that even in my situation, um, emotions and those type of things uh, can't overcome you if you, you don't do something about it. 
On top of dealing with COVID this off season, his brother Jace committed suicide and it weighed on him. The topic was brought up on the show uninterrupted and Skip Bayless questioned whether or not Dak should have opened up like that as a leader of an NFL team, specifically the Cowboys. Dak responded by saying, being a leader is about being genuine and being real. So you have to share these things. What do you think about opening up about mental health as a leader? I think that's so important because no matter what type of leader you are, whether you're a celebrity, you're, you're um, a quarterback for the NFL team, you're an influencer, whatever, you have to be able to be able to share your struggles with your audience. If not, then why do you really have a platform if you can't raise awareness for important issues? So I think it's very important that he did that, especially in like something as like manly and macho as um, football, and it could be seen um, in a different light that he opened up. People would be like, oh my God, why are you searing that on TV? Like nobody needs to know that, but like it's important to let young men know that it's important to talk about your issues. <laughs> Calling all digital nomads, Bali, Indonesia could be the next hotspot to welcome back individuals from out of the country. A petition has been recently signed by 2,000 plus digital nomads in regards to proposing an update on visa regulations. Since so many nomads had to leave the country when COVID hit, Bali relies heavily on tourism to keep its economy steady and local advocates, including lawyers and university lecturers living in Bali, have been proposing the logistics and benefits of longer visas in hopes that they can expand the current 30-day visa to a one-year visa for working nomads. What do you think of this? Darcy. <laughs> not sure if they're getting hit um, really hard by COVID, but if so, I feel like that's something they should definitely monitor and maybe um, do like a six month stay instead of a year stay, um, but a little bit more than 30 day, I think is good. The Google gods are making a slight change to their search engine. When you begin typing something in Google, it starts to complete what you are saying, which is their autocomplete feature. And they are modifying this feature leading up to the election. Their new policy states, we don't allow predictions that could be interpreted as a position for or against any candidate or political party. This comes after Google was accused of hiding negative autocomplete results about Hillary Clinton back in 2016. So what do you think of this one? I think that this could be potentially good because I have seen over the couple of years the go Google being um, kind of biased towards some um, political figures. Like when you search up like Hillary Clinton this, I did see back in 2016, it was talking about the email scandal and things like that. I'm like, I wasn't searching for that, but okay. Um, and then same with Donald Trump and other people that you search up. So I think it is good to control um, like at least in the auto search, cause I'm sure like, I, I'm not sure a hundred percent how it works, but I'm sure like if you literally type in Hillary Clinton's policies or Donald Trump's policies or whatever, you'd be able to see, but like it should have pop up as soon as you type. Yeah, it just will give you just like a whole new point of view that like you weren't really, that you originally didn't have in your head when something pops up, you're like, oh, change, like it's programmed. <laughs> Last night was the first kickoff of the season for the NFL. The matchup featured the Chiefs and the Texans, with the Chiefs coming out on top with a score of 34 to 20. If you watched the game, you would have seen the sparse amount of fans in the seats, and it turns out that the Chiefs were only allowing 22% of the fans into the stadium. As the first weekend of games continues with matchups like the Buccaneers and Saints, Steelers and Giants, you will see some stadiums empty and some at a fractioned capacity. Darcy, are you watching any of these games week this weekend? I did not watch um, when this happened, but I think I'm gonna watch my dad some pressuring me to watch, so I might be seeing them. So watch, watch with me, I'm like, ugh. I'm not really into sports, but yeah. I might just have to give it a go. I might just have to see what they're doing. Thank you so much for popping into the news with us. My name is Kelsey Cosmala. My name's Tanner, but most importantly, we have oh! Darcy on. Thank Woo! you for coming on, Darcy. Darcy Jackson, she's our fashion vlogger. You can check her out on YouTube and Instagram. Any final words you want to say to our audience? Um, thank you guys so much um, for letting me hang out today. Um, it's been so much fun. And um, be sure to check me out on YouTube. Um, it's just Darcy Jackson and Instagram at Darcy K Jackson, just with a K. Um, and on TikTok also at Darcy K Jackson. And you can see me over there. But it's been so much fun hanging out with that. I hope that you were entertained by these stories. Yeah, Darcy, what are you what are you mainly into? What are we gonna see if we go on to your YouTube on your Instagram? Um, you will mainly see fashion, lifestyle, and beauty content. I try to post a variety of that to keep everyone interested in guessing. So 
All right, guys, cool. we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye, Darcy. Bye. Okay.